uh, play of the game from way down. One, two, silence. The Raider getting absolutely a team wipe. The living bombs going. Oh my goodness, the ring. Bob says they go gonna find Raider. Keeps Maya up. It was gonna be a close thing. And he like, what? Get out of no! No! Triple stun again. Big flanks coming out from the uh, blaze. It's a death metal though. Death metal into oh, the double my. triple kill. All right, and welcome back, everybody. Uh, we are gonna get into match number three here with. Jailbait and Buff Chen from B East. My co-caster for this one is none other than Born to Shine. Welcome. Thank you, and hey everyone. Glad to be here. So, uh, I don't know where I saved that. Now that I think about it, now I gotta go find it. Okay, well in a moment, you guys will get to see Born to Shine's image, but for right now you just get to see the black screen, which doesn't <laughs> tell you a whole lot of anything. So, while I look for that, let's take a look here at the uh, at the maps real quick. So the bands for Jailbait, we had uh, Cursed Hollow and Sky Temple. And then we have the, let's see, that was for Jailbait. For Buff Chen, we had Dragonshire and Full Sky of Foundry. Ready to have a little fun? And I'm surprised Mr. no one banned Braxtus. It's been banned some, but surprisingly not as much as I kind of expected it to be, just in general. I might just be biased because it's my least favorite map, but... Oh, are you, uh, are you an, a member of Regen Blue as well? <laughs> no, but maybe that makes me an honorary member. Oh, there <laughs> Definitely you go. my least favorite. <laughs> sure, sure. All I right. would rather play Blackheart's Bay than Braxis. Holy cow. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> that's, that's That's awkward. how bad it is. <laughs> So, uh, okay, so let's go ahead and back over here, and I think now that I've got it set up so I can add you to the stream, survey says... Yes, but I have to resize it. <laughs> so one moment as we get you into an appropriate size for the stream. There we go. Born to shine, welcome to the cast, everybody. Yay, clap, clap, clap. There we go. All right, so B East, uh, first game's gonna be on Battlefield of Eternity. We've seen uh, Battlefield earlier today. I like that map. Yeah, I'm a fan. Let's see, Mega Muffin says Braxis is literally their favorite map. Uh, Jake Bot is excited that Born is joining the cast today. Good deal. All right. So uh, I think we're all set to go. We showed the maps, showed the bands, and I've got the thing all set up, I think, for the uh, stream. So I just need to make sure they're on the right side. They are on the right side. So I think we can get this going. All right, let's do it. Do you have a preference on which team you want to introduce? Uh, no, I, I will say I haven't been able to catch as many games uh, as I wanted to this season, so I'm, I'm not super familiar with either team, so I, you know, I'll take whichever. All right, well, I've been introducing the red side all day, so why don't you, uh, you can take care of Jailbait on the blue side. All right, sounds good. I don't have any reason to be doing red side. Usually I do the blue side. It's just how it worked out today. Yeah. All right. Game's just about loaded, so I can <laughs> hide the timer so you guys can't see how long this game takes. Don't want any spoilers. Exactly. <laughs> What is the rewind part of NGS Rewind? The rewind is because, you know what, that's a good thing. I didn't mention that in this one, but these do have highlights later. Uh, we'll come back to that. Let's let's do the introductions and then I'll, I'll come back and explain that. So go ahead, Born. <laughs> All right, on the blue side, we have H2O on Medivh, 
Cawthon on Diablo, Kobo on Leoric, Smug Dolphin on Anduin, and Galaxy on Greymane for Jailbait. All right. And for Buff Chen, we have uh, Kagatai on Lucio, Sosa on Raynor, Thistledew on Kael'thas, Middlebear on Muradin, and SVX on Imperius. So the NGS Rewind is basically, uh, you know, turning back the clock a few days, generally speaking, within the last week, and catching some of the matches that were not initially cast live, so that we can make sure that as many of the games, so far 100% of the games, can be uh, posted up for, you know, video review and have casters. So that's it in a nutshell. <clears throat> All right, so Leoric and Imperius in the top lane to be expected, and I think these are pretty yeah. even, just in general. I think so, yeah. Looks like we got Leoric pushing in a little bit, Imperius backing off just for now, as we've got the 4v4 going on in bot lane. Yeah, and the, the 4v4 in the bot lane, so what do we have for race? We've got Raynor primarily, uh, uh, Greymane on the other side, so pretty equal this is these are not really race heavy teams this is a little bit more focused on um the team fight and the cc out of the kalthos the obviously the uh wow well, i can't remember the name of the shield from medivh whatever he does that thing medivh shield yeah medivh shield yeah yeah that's what it's called right <laughs> that's what i call it you know <laughs> yeah. force of will that's but, what it's called okay there we go so, yeah, and, uh, you know, Monk is calling out that uh, Sosa didn't take the Exterminator, which, you know, I don't I don't mind it, um, especially with the team they've got. But it's going to be Diablo charged onto this will into the wall. But uh, I, good disengage there. I think Jimmy, even without that talent, is still going to do a decent amount of damage to that Immortal. Um, I mean, maybe, like you said, they're kind of maybe focused a little more on the team fight here with that talent, but... You know, he's still going to be their primary source of damage. Right. And, you know, we don't see it a lot. At least I haven't seen it that much since uh, Lucio's rework. But Raynor's um, ace in the hole combos really well with uh, reverse amp. Very true. Very true. Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of Lucio, like you said, since his rework. So that's something I never really, you know, put two and two together on. But you're right. Later so, in the game, that could make a make a big deal, big difference. Yeah, so we see uh, the bird hovering over Rainer and Lucio. <laughs> Greymane able to secure the Shaman camp a little bit earlier for Jailbait. Yep. Um, unfortunately, Buff Chen not going to be able to get away with too much this game. Medivh's always going to be there to scout what they're doing. But they looks like they're going to secure their camp as well. A little bit after the fact, but both camps should be pushing and bot and kind of opposite each other and give each team a little bit of breathing room to get started on these immortals. Well, Imperius is all by himself here in defense, is going to get flipped by Diablo and uh, going to be first kill. First blood. Yep. First blood for Jailbait. They've already got this immortal down to half health, so we are going to switch around here. Although, Buff Chen not too, too far behind. Um, looks like there's going to be a little bit, a little bit of a scrap there in mid with Muradin, but both teams are going to choose to focus on the Immortal and try to win this race. Yeah, and this is, uh, uh, I think that was a questionable jump, really just trying to delay the team to focus on uh, Muradin instead of on the Immortal. Ultimately, it's not mm -hmm. going to matter. They they don't take the <laughs> the bait. Jailbait doesn't <laughs> take the bait. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't on purpose, but I'm gonna run with it. Uh, <laughs> but you know, the same thing happened with Imperius, and now you know Murden trying to cut off this rotation. Yeah, and he was—he's kind of lucky to make it out. He was in pretty deep um, on the side of Jailbait there. You know, kind of lucky to, to walk out like he did. You know, they chose not to to go after him and instead focus on the Immortal. Um, so now we see their four stack down and bot pushing in with that Leoric and Imperius back top lane. Um, unfortunately, first Immortal in the game usually doesn't get too, too much damage done. We can see it's already almost dead here. But they're at least going to get the, the wall and those, those towers down out front yeah. of um, Fort. 
And Thistle Dude getting caught by that root does take a lot of damage, but with the uh, the fort now being able to get some damage out there, they do get the kill onto the gray main. Yeah, and and I, I, Go ahead. I would say that's worth. I would say that's worth it. You know, they took out the wall, they took out the, the fountain down there, so one death for that, I would say. Pretty good trade. Yeah, because people respawn, structures don't. <laughs> Very true. Need to put that on a bumper sticker. <laughs> Might get some weird looks from the non-hots people who are kind of like, um... <laughs> We're gonna see the Anduin kill on to the Muradin. They do ultimately secure the point, though. Kind of surprising, uh, as Diablo yeah. portaled out. Mm -hmm. But, um... Probably they are gonna be able to clear worth. that out pretty quick. Yeah, probably a little <laughs> less worth there. You know, but it's cleared out pretty quick. Didn't get really any value other than taking it away from their opponents, so... Good knockback from Lucio, though, keeping his uh, team safe there as Diablo charging in. And we do see that reverse amp now from Kagatai. So, you know, they yeah. will get that. Th and that's a lot of value for, for, you know, that's a lot of time. You know, oftentimes you'll see, you know, hey, they're slowed for a, a moment. But that's a good, what, six seconds or something like that for uh, crossfade? Or amp it up, I yeah, guess. I don't, I don't remember off the top of my head, but that sounds about right. I mean, we can look. I haven't, I haven't played look? Lucio in, in all that long. Like you said, since the rework, I haven't seen too much of him. So, okay, so for three seconds, it lasts. The amp it up does. Is it really only three seconds? I, maybe. Okay. Yeah, but let me tell you, three seconds feels like an eternity. <laughs> in maybe, this game. yeah, maybe that's just what it is. I'm like, it feels like longer, but. <laughs> Murden goes Ooh. in deep. But this time Again? uses yeah uses his uh, dwarf toss to get away, but there's a big portal chasing him down, <laughs> <laughs> and that's gonna be the kill. But this time they're a little bit behind on the race. Yeah, so it looks like pot string a little bit. You know, like they're they're gonna try and maybe chase another kill or two before they back out to go continue attacking a mortal. We see Diablo um, wall banging Jimmy there and do land that kill. So this gives them that little bit of space. Now they can go maybe and try and catch up on the immortal with that little bit of breathing room. Yeah, I mean, with with Rainer dead, I mean, I feel like they could have just gone straight for the immortal, but instead, yeah. Kale Foss can be the next sacrifice to the jailbait machine. Decided they wanted another kill. So, and Murden here again looks like he's trying to delay a little bit. Once again, gets flipped by Diablo, but. And He's gonna walk out of there. Yeah, and positioning's so important when you're playing into a Diablo. Um, you know, getting shadow charged by itself, not that big of a deal. Getting shadow charged against a wall sucks. Yep. Yep, and I I myself know this firsthand. I'm guilty of not paying attention to where I am in relation to all the walls, and all of a sudden you can find yourself in the middle of the enemy team and whoops. Big whoops. Yeah, and it was, you know, comedic timing there as uh just after saying that. Muradin gets charged right yeah. into a wall. <laughs> <laughs> I know how it feels, Muradin. I've been there myself many a time. Hector <laughs> Colin wall banging Jimmy yeah. Moist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, uh, uh, Hector, I gotta ask. You're gonna have to fill me in with the isn't running with scissors statement. I've seen it a couple times. I don't. I'm not catching the reference, so I'd love to hear the uh, the details. Oh, check out that ley line. We do see a, a light bomb doesn't get anywhere, though. Looked like it yeah, could Diablo, have been really well done, too. Diablo going in, getting saved by the Medivh shield and then able to portal out. That's excellent play by Medivh here that we see. Imperius going in, trying to get a kill on him. But the follow-up wasn't quite there. So as of right now, all the members of Jailbait are still up. Diablo flipping Muradin again. But looks like everyone's gonna try and back out here, make use of those portals because they're they're getting low on health. But unfortunately, Greymane does go down. Oh, there's a haymaker! Haymaker! Oh, I get to see it. I was so sad I didn't get to see it last game. <laughs> haymaker, playmaker. Oh man, and they get the two kills for uh, I don't want to say for nothing because they did lose their fort, but they do get two kills. If you're gonna lose your fort, at least you get the consolation prize of a couple of. Deaths yeah. and XP. Two kills and top camp here we see getting getting picked up. And you know, I've seen a lot of the um the light bomb plays like lately, both in, you know, Storm League and in matches, 
where just like with that Diablo where, you know, the communication isn't quite there um, or, or yeah. maybe the preparation. It's just not as practiced and polished as, you know, you'd like to see it because mm -hmm. Light Bomb gets so much value when used properly. But it's a fairly short cooldown. It's like 45, 50 seconds. So even yeah. if you miss, it's no big deal. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of a feels bad moment. I play Anduin and I, I've had those moments, like you said, where the communication or the timing isn't quite there. And it just, it feels, it feels kind of bad. But, um, you know, like you said, that communication, it's important. You got to get that timing, that timing down to get the, the proper value out of it. So bot lane has a little bit of health for buff Chen as they make their way to their shaman camp. Top lane has no fort whatsoever. I almost uh, oh. wouldn't. I almost wouldn't mind seeing Jailbait knock down this um, fort even before they go race, because then they can be mm -hmm. extremely patient. Yeah, right now it looks like focusing on clearing the camp, and they're choosing just to to head up to the Immortal. It looks like their camp will be pushing bot lane, so it might get that that bot fort uh, for them. Eventually, yeah, and they do have level thirteen advantage now too, so they've got that yeah. going for them. You know, they can afford to kind of go in a little more aggressively here until Buff Chen is able to catch up. And I do want to point out here that uh, for Medivh here, he's... Oh, okay, we'll come back to that. Leyline Seal going yeah. out. There's the APOC missed, I think. Not Doesn't positive. Catch everybody. Leoric going down. Um, Light Bomb was used. And we see almost all alts used here on the side of Jailbait. So Medivh is going to be able to get away and uh, trading Anduin's life there, ultimately. But yeah. uh, how's he doing on stacks? Let's check that out. Medivh is done with Master's Touch. So so it looks like they're going to get this uh, get this to halftime at the very least. So what I was going to point out about Medivh. So he's got two talents. He's got the Force of Will uh, re cooldown reduction. So if it prevents X amount of damage, then it just reduces the cooldown. Mm -hmm. And then he's also got Arcane Explosion. So if they take a a bunch of damage they do a bunch of damage so you know that's where you get the extra burst out of medivh mm -hmm. and it looks like everybody is back up here anduin going to be a little late to the party um buff chen a little ahead on the immortal damage you see the entomb going out from the orc diablo charging in getting the flip over onto thistle do and that was the light bomb right there that, yeah that was a good light bomb we see it definitely getting value there. Leoric and Deep on the back line trying to chase down Kael'thas. Leyline Seal coming out. So they should get the kill on the Kale. Yeah. They do. Mm -hmm. Imperius like gets flipped. He goes down as well. They do get the uh, counter kill onto Leoric, which, you know, if you're going to get a counter kill, that's the mm -hmm. one that they want you to get. Yeah. Um. Oh, and Murden? <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna make it out. another wonderfully placed portal from Mediv there, and but they didn't even need it, right? I mean, Anduin secured the kill with his uh, divine star, but absolutely like great placement on the portal. And you know, I, I, this is the second or third time we've seen Muradin, you know, go in deep, stick around a, maybe a little bit too long, and then just barely get away. It, and then suddenly Medivh portals and you know he's not respecting the value of what their team comp can do with him yeah you definitely can't play as aggressively on any hero when when those portals are are there you know there's always the risk of someone catching up to you just as you're trying to sneak away all right so we've got the set for the portal there not really uh, making any value there yeah, no value there. We do see Hyperion coming out from Raynor, trying to provide a little bit of defense here, but this is still a very healthy Immortal, and that keep is down to half health. Even with Hyperion, Light Bomb on Diablo, we see it getting value again, but Jailbait's in pretty deep. Keep finally falls. Nice save by Anduin there with the Leap of Faith, and Jail uh, Jailbait choosing to, to back out. They got the keep. They got what they came for. Not any time to push in further. And you know what? Uh, I, I do want to point out both Leyline and Apocalypse were used there. Um, Diablo shadow charging probably the one person that would have ended up getting hit by the Leyline. So 
Uh, probably really good play out of buff chant either really lucky play or really good play on them to not get caught by that because if they did i mean that could have ended the game right there if if two or so people get caught by that combo um they don't need the immortal then they can just burn yeah. on the core they've got Greyman. Mm -hmm. yep <clears throat> but i mean they're definitely jobe definitely does have the the upper hand here you know they've got uh, they've got all their structures up. There's only one structure left on the side of Buff Chen. You know, they just picked up Bot Camp and they're um, posturing over at Buff Chen's camp. And uh, this time, oh. <laughs> no Dwarf Toss available for Muradin. Just a quick portal in, slam into the wall, and he's gone. I think that was the fastest I've ever seen a Muradin blown up before. All that health, and it didn't help too much, unfortunately. Yeah, it was pretty pretty intense, you know, Jailbait making really good use of the portals uh, for Chase, for uh, setting up plays in the, in this case, in the camp, um, and, and now for using it to disengage the uh, Living Bomb. Mm -hmm. We're going to see that camp pushing in top, Jailbait pushing in a little bit bot here, but Buff Chen going to be forced to clear both lanes before they can even think about going to the Immortal. And we're gonna see uh, Jailbait get right onto the Immortal. They have plenty of time. They can easily get to half time uh, yep. with no damage coming out from Buff Chen. You know, and they, you know, they've got all this map pressure. They definitely want to keep up that momentum for sure. You know, keep that moving. So get it down to half time already, and heading forward just to kind of scout out and see what Buff Chen is doing and if they can. Maybe get an themselves another pick here. Murden, once again, so far forwards, slammed and flipped by Diablo. Saved by the beat drop from Lucio. We see Leyline Seal, we see Apoc coming out. And so far, no deaths. I expect to see that change pretty soon here. Well, maybe not. Diablo getting the leap of faith out of the uh, dangerous positioning there. Leoric able to Wraith walk away, but is not quite going to go down. I thought he was going to get taken out by the Rainer. Just just under yeah. 100 health and you know what like that's the said, level difference for the amount of alts we saw used there i expected at least one maybe two deaths i'm i'm impressed but now they've got to go back as uh we've got catapults now pressuring in the top lane mm -hmm. catapults uh, on the core the orc in deep getting stunned by um imperious but it looks like we're going to see Jailbait here able to finish off this Immortal, hopefully without, without too much extra trouble. SVX getting flipped into the middle of the team there. The Entomb going out. Imperius is going to be the first kill here. Light Bomb did get uh, booped away, so it didn't get any value there. But uh, they're continuing to chase down. And Leoric has that level 13 uh, damage reduction as well. So not only... Does Jailbait have damage reduction from Leoric? They have damage immunity from uh, Medivh and the potential to return the damage back onto you. This is this is a rough team to play into. For sure. Um, and now they've got, you know, they've got the Immortal picked up here. They're going to hit 20s first if we get to that point. Um, you know, they've definitely got the upper hand here going into this this next Immortal. All right, so portal in, coming in deep. We do see Leoric spreading around that damage reduction, and uh, the ley line probably <laughs> keeping Muradin alive in this case, but they do land the APOC finally, the first time this game where they get that. And uh, big sound Diab barrier out from Lucio. <laughs> oh, I was about to say Diablo saved once again by that leap of faith, but he does still end up getting blown up, and that's going to force um, Jailbait to kind of back out a little bit here. Diablo is back, but now he's minus his souls, and he's going to have to come across the entire map to catch up with them. So, the Immortal's well, going to get a little bit of core damage here, but I don't but, know. If... But they don't lose the game. No, the game is not lost. But the game's still very much, I would say, in Jailbait's favor. Yes. Yeah. They're going to pick up 20s here before too long. They're in a good position to get camps. Uh, Buff Chen's going to have to play defense for a little while here. Push these lanes out, try and protect the core, which is just at about half health. Um, and they're going to have to watch and... Yep, I was going to say they're going to have to watch their camp. 
before Jailbait tries to move in on that. And it looks like both teams kind of have that, that same idea. Yeah, and Monkus, they did use the ley line there. It actually set up the APOC, so um, so there was that. We do see the charge again onto Murden. He gets rooted at the wall there, but again, they added those towers. So fighting under those towers is not the best thing. We're going to see the Haymaker oh. run a big four-man uh, ley line there. All right, yep. Saved by Medivh. Kael'thas gets blown up by Greymane. Fortunately, Diablo kind of stuck there in the Entomb. He does fall, too. Oh, Leap of Faith from Anduin coming out, I think, under Greymane there, but I don't know that it's going to save him. Imperius on the hunt, trying to get him, but he is going to walk away, it looks like. Yeah, and I now think... Imperius might be in a little bit of trouble himself. No, he walks away, too. I, I don't know that I, I really liked that idea. I mean, they didn't need to come in on this Shaman camp. They had the advantage with level 20. I think they could have just, you know, mm -hmm. played it a little bit more defensively. Um, both teams lose a hero, so whatever, but you do lose your tank, and that's pretty important um, against yeah. this, this enemy team. I mean, Diablo has been uh, instrumental in bodying Muradin for 90% of this game without Diablo... Murden has a, a lot easier chance to get into the back line and cause problems, especially with Haymaker. Yeah. And it kind of does give Buff Chen just a little bit of breathing room here. They can try and catch up, try and get their 20s themselves. Um, and they're moving in pretty aggressively here. We see Playmaker coming out again. Haymaker <laughs> coming out onto Greymane there, but pulled out Leap of Faith by Anduin. Leyline catching quite a few members there. So we're going to give a pause to let Diablo get back into the fight with the rest of Jailbait. And once again, now we've got a camp and catapults going in the bot lane in toward core. So Kalthus is going to have to uh, hearth back to deal with this. Yeah, so Buff Chen's going to be down one member here for this team fight. And the Entomb coming out, Diablo able to wall bang uh, Rainer into the Entomb. He falls. Imperius is the next to go down. And it looks like Jailbait is going to chase down Muradin as well. Rooted by the Anduin, but... Haymaker's Leoric out of there, and he does get to walk away, too. I thought for sure that was going to be the end of Muradin. Uh, you know what? For what it's worth, I thought so, too. <laughs> so Muradin uh, now picking up the level 20 for an additional Haymaker. So <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Let's go deep into the memes here. Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I mean, I feel like if you take you take Haymaker, you got to you got to go big or go home. You might as well go all the way with it. Absolutely. So we see a 3v5 here. Um, I don't know. They don't have Rainer. They don't have Imperius. This is... I don't know what they think they're going to kill uh, other than Muradin right now. Silenced <laughs> in the tomb. Yep. Doesn't get to use his second Haymaker. I, I don't know if they figured, you know, this is it. This is our one chance. You know, we have to try and do something. Otherwise, yeah. you know, they get the Immortal and it's game. So, you know, they may have just been thinking, like, you know, we might as well try and do something. Um... They're, they are up four now. Murden's the only one down. We see Leyline coming out. Light bomb. A little bit of a miscommunication there. Not really getting any value. Let's see if Leoric can race walk out of there. He does. Hyperion coming out from Rainer. And, and Rainer gets a kill on out. Greymane. Whoa. Yeah, they have to back out. They have no. Yeah. Uh, they have no damage potential at this point. Other than I guess you know. Q's out of uh, Medivh, but that puts him in an yeah. awkward place, too, so... Mm -hmm. But more more um, pressure rolling up on two Buff Chen's core, though. They're going to have to watch. Two Catapults again. Someone's going to have to go back and take care of that before more pressure builds. And we see a big Entomb coming out there on three members of Buff Chen and the, and the upgrade at 20, the Silence. But surprisingly, no deaths there. I cannot believe that, and and SVX <laughs> even used Celestial Charge into that, got silenced himself, yeah. and they get the kill onto the uh, the Leoric, but <laughs> the counter kill onto Lucio. This is such a cloud VS, I don't understand what is going on here. I, I can honestly say this is this later game here has not followed any of my, my predictions or my expectations. Diablo gets blown up by Murd, and Murden gets his revenge. Um... Blows and then Haymakers Anduin away. Not quite enough follow up from Buff Chen to take him out, though. And it looks like Buff Chen is going to secure this immortal. I, I, You know what? I guess, like, Berserk calling it out in chat. Y YOLO straight up. 
<laughs> like, yeah, I mean, you can't you can't win the game if if uh, you don't you know get the pressure on the immortal and and these structures. It it's got a fair amount of shielding for a, a late game uh, immortal. I mean, so, in late game immortals yeah. do a lot of damage. You know, they they've got a lot of punch behind them. So this this is gonna be interesting. I I've been surprised by these in tombs. They've been good in tombs, but with the exception of the uh, the Muradin blow up that they had, where everybody just dove in, yeah, um, like even the silenced in tombs have not generally converted kills. Although after saying that, mm -hmm. Muradin once but again dies in the entomb. <laughs> once again, yeah, but that was that was good combo use there. You know, the entomb and the silence throwing the light bomb in as he's just trying to get out, stun him, blow him up. So the the follow up was there at that time, but like you said before the. The Entombs have been good, but the follow-up wasn't always there. And Leorix chasing them down. He's at least going to be able to slow them down. We'll see if uh, yep. if the team can get... Oh, Hellgate used flips Kael'thas out of the uh, stun, though. Leyline used on Kael'thas, and... It, yep. He, too, gets blown up. But he's placing the portal so that Jelbe can continue to chase. It looks like they're going to try and get another kill or two here onto Buff Chen. And the Immortal and is about to die. I think this is probably the game. Probably. You know, that Immortal was strong. It got through two structures, but unassisted, it's not going to do any core damage. And now, Jailbait here on the core. They died to the Buff catapults Chen. in the tomb. I was like, how did they both die so quickly? It looked like Li Ming threw an orb in there. But yeah. the catapults, there was four or five catapults there. And they're sort of, pshoo! Late game catapults are no joke. <laughs> I yeah, will say that. Lot. <laughs> Holy cow! That was, that was something else. That was fun to watch. like. I feel I feel bad for saying that because you know Buff Chen, you know, didn't really get their groove on until the, you know, twenty fourth minute of that game. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, Jailbait certainly had some mistakes in there too. Their combos didn't quite line up. Once they started to, it was it was just brutal, and and Buff Chen just got it was just a bloodbath. Um, mm -hmm. But it was a fun game to to, to watch. That was fun, just because it didn't quite go the way, you know, that we expected it. There were some surprises in there. So, always fun when, you know, our expectations can be challenged. For sure. And uh, Ektar bringing up earlier, I mentioned about the running with scissors. He says, if Anduin uses W on the front gate before the game begins, his W projectile goes out but never comes back because anything that goes over the wall before the game starts gets destroyed. Because the pro projectile never comes back, Anduin never puts his sword away until he dies. All right. Oh, interesting. And thus is the running with scissors comment. That makes more sense. I'm going to have to try this in my next game now. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, popping up stats here real quick for everybody to, to yep. take a look here. Yeah, uh, you know what? Fair point, Munkus. Um, the exterminator providing additional value there. Um, may have been enough to to give them a bit more of an edge uh, on the race, and you know maybe they get more immortals then at that point. Yeah. Let's see. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pop up the next game. Give these people their point. So the next game is gonna be on Infernal Shrines. Mm, First one of my that today. favorite maps. Uh, Jailbait picked this one as well. So what do you like about Infernal Shrines? What is it that's what, that causes it to be one of your favorite maps? I just always enjoy just the mechanics of it, of, you know, fighting the little shrine minions, trying to get a big Punisher for yourself. Plus, I get to play Alexstrasza as a support main on Shrines a lot. and She is absolutely one of my favorite uh, supports to play. So I've, I've always just really enjoyed the map, both for itself and for the fact that I get to turn into a giant dragon on it. What's not to like about that? I mean, that's completely fair and reasonable. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the best things about uh, playing Alex Straza is being able to be a dragon. For sure, absolutely. Both mechanically and also just aesthetically. Yeah. Yeah, they did do a really good job, I think, with the dragon in game. Like, it's just, it's such a neat mechanic. All right, well, I got the teams ready. I gave them their point. I don't think there's anything holding us up. You ready to go into game number two? Yep, let's do it. All right. Let's see if the, let me just catch up on chat. Make sure there's nothing I missed in chat. Um, 
<laughs> Mega Muffin. Infernal Shrines is my least favorite map. Oh, <laughs> boring. You guys are so opposite today. We are exact opposites on our map choices. <laughs> our map preferences. <laughs> Uh, haunted. I, 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 I've got to say, Berserk, I'm 100% there with you on uh, Haunted Minds. Totally best map. Feels what? bad that they don't bring that back into the game. <laughs> I mean, go. if they wanted to swap out Haunted Minds for Hanamura, I probably wouldn't be upset about that. Still don't like Hanamura, even after the rework. I like Hanamura. Hanamura. I, you know what? Uh, I like a lot of the maps that people don't like. I don't know why. I mean, everyone has their own their own preferences, their own tastes in maps. So I think each map, you know, because they do different things, you know, there's something people can find to enjoy on each of them. I just don't find Hanamura fun. I don't like having to go around and just get camps all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Alrighty, so game number two on Infernal Shrines between Jailbait and Buff Chen. Take it away, Born. So on the blue team for Jailbait, we have Kobo on Blaze, Cawthon on Anubarak, Galaxy on Jaina, H2O on Deckard, and Smug Dolphin on Greymane. Smug Dolphin's my favorite name for this game, by the way. My favorite name of the match. I really like Smug Dolphin, and it reminds me of John Oliver, and I can't remember the, the skit why, but he talks about, you know, stupid dolphins or something, and it's really great. I'll have to find that link sometime so that I can remember yeah. it. But uh, for Buff Chen, we've got Sosa on Vala, I think, uh, Kegatai on Anduin, which, by the way, that's my favorite name in this match, uh, Thistledew on Sylvanas, <laughs> Middle Bear on Muradin, and SVX on Malaganus. And uh, coincidentally, my my other favorite name in uh, in Division B is Segatai. I don't know why. I just <laughs> I, I I realized that with Kagatai last night. We were talking mm -hmm. about it, and I just those are those are two names that I really like. I think it's yeah. partially because of the um, triplet kind of. Uh, damn it, Ektar! What was the word? Tempo? Not tempo. It was something else. Anyways. Uh, Cadence, Ectar perhaps? Roll. Cadence, that was the word. I, I forgot that go. word last week, too. <laughs> um, but yeah, just that like triple it uh, kind of cadence for, for the name. I, I like it, and I like wasabi. It's my favorite word. Yeah. Wasabi. <laughs> Let's see here. We see Murden kind of slowing down these rotations here, playing aggressively just as he did last game. But no Diablo this game to, um, to slam him into walls. You know what? I wonder if Diablo was banned out. I can take a look. Diablo was not banned out, actually. Oh, okay. Interesting. The bands, uh, Johanna, Thrall, and Kael'thas were banned out by Jailbait. Okay. And let me make sure I've got the camera in a better position here so you guys can see this stuff. Um, Buff Chen actually banned out ETC, Taronda, and Leoric. Oh, okay. Didn't want to see the Leoric again. Um, Kael'thas and Johanna are, are two heroes I see banned a lot on this map just because of... Um, the value in, in, in clearing the shrines. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, Johanna can really disrupt rotations and do so pretty safely as well uh, in between the mid and bot lane. Yeah. That's one of my favorite um, Carbot cartoons is the one of her where everybody's focusing her and she's just continuing to walk along. Diablo's using lightning breath, heroes are hanging off her legs and she just walks away on out of there. Completely accurate in game. I, uh, I think my favorite one is the is the Ana one where she shoots and misses everybody because oh. <laughs> Rainer gets in the way or they just they move at the last second or. Mm -hmm. I mean that one's also accurate too. Totally accurate. Absolutely. As an Ana player, that's pretty frustrating. <laughs> so uh, top lane we got Blaze versus Malganus. It appears to be pretty even uh, between these two. They both are you know pretty healthy. Pretty decent mana, and uh, we're gonna see the rotation to the Shaman Camp coming out from Jailbait. <laughs> Deckard and Anubarak fighting Muradin. <laughs> no damage versus no damage. All right. Yep. I don't know, but that that's that Deckard skin makes him look pretty badass. The Deckard Pain skin. I like it a lot. That's true. That's true. It is. Uh, I think one of my favorite skins that they've added in the game. Um, you know, especially those canteens and his little kind of scouting area with his. Uh, scroll of ceiling yeah i like how the scroll of ceiling is like the barbed wire 
Right, yeah. <laughs> so we do see the possession from Sylvanas. No Shadow Dagger stacks yet at level one. Uh, but again, you know, gotta have those team fights. And here they are, Middle Bear getting pulled out by the Leap of Faith. Coffin deep in, taking a lot of damage. And uh, Vala, it looked like, was trying to go in after that kill, but not quite able to uh, to complete it. Yeah, and you and I were talking about that just, you know, before this match even started. You know, I mentioned that it, Anubarak as, as a tank can struggle sometimes just because he is squishier than, than other tanks. Can't stay in there quite the way Muradin or Diablo or Johanna can and take as much damage. And we do see Vala ending up securing that Anubarak kill there. Yeah, and SVX in a lot of danger here. I was just going to say, I expected Jet Propulsion coming in as this team is very stacked up. But unfortunately uh, for Jailbait, they didn't have anybody there to help follow up on that big stun. Yeah. Uh, Jailbait does have the advantage on the, the little shrine monkeys here. So all they need is one more, and they've secured this Punisher for themselves. Ooh, the stun coming out from Blaze to um, to save Greymane. Muradin caught a little bit in the middle of, of Jailbait, but able to jump out. And they do secure that first um, that first Punisher of the game. Yeah, and it's going to be an Arcane Punisher. And, you know, the Arcane Punishers were nerfed pretty heavily uh, here, mm -hmm. at least the early game Arcane Punishers. So not even quite enough by itself to get that uh, tower the blizzard used to make sure that they finish it off yeah unfortunately not going to get too much value out of that uh, they get you know a tower and, and a wall down um but immediately rotating back onto camps to try and keep up that pressure and i think you know if especially if it's a an arcane punisher in the early game you've got sylvanas i think that they could have taken that sylvanas and vala and, you know, maybe even come into the bot lane that's pretty far away, get some value onto the structures. They could have probably gotten mm -hmm. more value out of a, out of structure damage with Sylvanas than uh, than what they lost mm -hmm. from the Punisher. Mm-hmm. Probably. <coughs> Excuse me. But it looks like even with Buff Chen here in the bot lane... Jobe's going to go in and, and actually end up securing that bot camp. We didn't see uh, Buff Chen contest that at all. Their camp's pushing in mid, opposite of Jailbaits. But now they're going to have to clear um, clear bot. When you see a Nubrak dive in there going after the Vala, um, but his team wasn't quite in position to follow up, so just a, a little bit of a scare tactic maybe, forcing Vala to yeah. vault away. And that's another thing with the Nubarak, you know, you're kind of all in. If you dive in, you know, with that stun, you know, your team has to follow up. Or, again, a Nubarak leaves himself vulnerable to being blown up. Yeah, and that was some good uh, impale into Scroll of Ceiling, into Burrow Charge coming out from uh, uh, a Nubarak to keep Muradin locked down there for a pretty significant amount of time. But again, you know, Jaina at this point hasn't completed her level one quest so she doesn't have that 10 percent additional damage she hasn't completed her baseline quest uh although that doesn't increase her damage but you know it's a thing mm -hmm. yeah i mean knowing you have your ice block there allows you to play a little more aggressively as Jaina and maybe go in a little deeper to try and get that extra damage that you wouldn't necessarily do without it and so ultimate's coming up for jailbait here uh and shortly thereafter for buff chen Yep, let's see. We see Stay a while and listen from Deckard, go for the throat from Greymane, Ring from Jaina, Cocoon from Anubarak, and Blaze still holding on to his for the moment. He does take Combustion. Yeah, and Combustion really coming into the meta once they uh, pretty much doubled the bunker cooldown. Yeah. <laughs> pretty yeah. hard nerf on mm -hmm. the bunker. Uh, Absolutely. So for uh, Buff Chen, we've got Light Bomb, Avatar, uh, Reign of Vengeance. The Wailing Arrow and uh, that's Carrion Swarm, right? I think. Carrion Swarm, yep. It is, yeah. I don't see the other one often enough to remember what it looks like, but Carrion Swarm doesn't look like what I would expect it to look like, so I never yeah. think that's what it is. <laughs> I don't see the other alt enough. Like, I don't even know that I could tell you what his other alt is called. Uh, I was <laughs> sitting here trying to remember it. Uh, Dark Conversion, maybe? 
dark. That sounds right. Something like that? that? Sounds right. Yeah, sounds about uh, right. Cocoon going out onto Malganus and the Burrow Charge missing, but Light Bomb going on to Anduin does get the uh, stun out on a two or three, but it looks like Kagata is going to be the first to die. Actually, that's not true. Anubarak's the first to die. <laughs> and uh, Jaina's going to get the third... Uh, I don't know. Ribbon? In that one, as she does yeah. as well, and Blaze, Blaze. I'm sorry, Bronze Jaina, metal. and then Blaze. Yeah, Bronze Metal. There we go. <laughs> Words are tough. Okay, and we see the Frozen Punisher um, still getting picked up by Jailbait. Um, you know, they lost three people over it. Not going to have too much push behind it, unfortunately. So I don't know how much value they're going to get out of this. But we do see the members of Buff Chen. You know, Murden is top trying to clear that camp. Anduin was just mid, so it looks like they're trying to at least maybe get a little bit of value or mitigate some pressure in other lanes while clearing this. And we've got now four versus four in the bottom lane. This bottom camp once again available. And, you know, the the Greymane Jaina combo allowing them to burst things down pretty quickly. Um, I'm interested to see if we see Greymane take uh, Alpha Killer at 16 with. Mm -hmm. the stuns and, and slows and roots and all that stuff that we have from yeah. this team, that could really melt, you know, anybody on their team extra extra mm -hmm. fast with the Muradin yep. and Malganas. Yeah. And it looks like, yep, Jalbay does pick up Buff Chen's camp there, and they're heading on over to theirs. They're just trying to, to paint as much of the map blue as they can. We have level 13s online. Blaze now in a bit of danger. Does use jet propulsion, but uh, Murden able to, to block it. Doesn't have enough mana, I think, to use Stormbolt, though. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to be able to secure the kill onto Blaze. He is able to walk right in there, get that fort, and then walk out again. <laughs> I love that in Twitch chat, we're dealing with moderator duties as well. Get those games yeah. scheduled, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We have mods all over this game. We've got him as yep. the caster, the co-caster, watching in chat. So schedule your flex matches, please. Are you talking to uh, to anybody, any teams in particular? I might be talking to Division A. Yeah. Well, we're going to see that ring combo obliterating the Malganus with a stay a while. But the light bomb thrown out onto Murden does get some stuns, but it, there's no follow-up to that, unfortunately. So we see all the members of Jailbait still up. And uh, Buff Chen down two, which is going to allow Jailbait to push in here and now get this mid fort as well. And three versus four, so that's pretty clean for them. The wall, uh, or I'm sorry, the uh, wave coming up, but they're getting. Wow, Scroll of Ceiling just took out all those. Yeah. I don't think it did that much damage. He's Deckard Pain. Does Deckard all the damage. Deckard Pain. <laughs> And uh, we do see the super healing pots getting those massive canteens now. Yeah. And Blaze heads back up to top lane by himself. And we see all the members of Buff Chen coming down and posturing at their their bot fort. And Jailbait, I think, doing the smart thing, kind of backing out here a little bit. You know, they're only 4v5 here. There's no real need for them to push in and try and put too much pressure on that fort at this point. Deckard completing his level one quest and getting that armor penalty now whenever he roots a hero. So uh, that could be very problematic with the combination that we talked about earlier with the Jaina and uh, Greymane. I mean, Jaina hasn't quite finished her quest yet, but again, I mean, that she did uh, finish Fingers of Frost, Frost so yep. she at least has that 10% damage bonus now. She's got the Icy Veins. I mean, that could be a real quick blow up on anybody that gets caught by a Deckard root. One more team fight, and she's going to have that ice block. Oh, yeah, for you sure. Know, one more big ring, and, you know, she'll get that last bit of damage there pretty easily. And Shaman Camp v Shaman Camp in the top lane. A little bit of an advantage over to Jailbait, but we see the Stay a While popping out. Root going out, trying to catch from uh, Anduin there. I don't think it caught anybody there. Carrion Swarm is going to keep Malganus alive, but Middle Bear gets the Leap of Faith to pull out to safety, but might go down, does go down. So I expected um, to see a new Brack going down there, but he does manage to stay alive. Jaina so far, the, Jaina and Murden, but the only two so far to have died. Decker doing a good job of keeping a new Brack alive there, even though he was in a little deep. Blaze also a little low since he was in deep. Greymane does get the kill onto Vala. So right now it is, well now it's two for two. 
was about to say it's two for one, but we're two for two. We're even now. Jet propulsion stops Malganus in his tracks, uh, but he's going to keep going. He's got full health, so he's not too worried about this Blaze and Anubarak. They have no real damage that they can can do anything with this here, and so no. they're going to get working on the, the Shrine. Yeah, they're a little bit behind. I think that's the smart play. Go in, try and get some damage on the Shrine minions while Jailbait kind of has to, you know, get themselves back together, regroup, and then get ready to come back in. We still see Buff Chen's camp pushing in lane there, too. So they're they're trying to get that cleared up as well. Stay a while hits um, on the end when they put the cocoon onto Sylvanas. And now this is uh, only two of the Buff Chen available. Deep into the back line, though, yeah. are both of the tanks <laughs> leaving uh, Blaze to just go in the back. And here comes I mean, the they, big combustion. They were trying to get that Jaina, but great peeling by the tanks. Unfortunately, Blaze does die to Vala, but now... Malganus is low. Jaina's back in with full health. Greymane falls as well, unfortunately. But <laughs> once again, Jailbait does pick up that Punisher. Yeah, and Greymane even... may have died, but he did get the kill onto Malganus before he mm -hmm. did so. You know, even when they're losing two or three people at these these shrines, Jailbait is still managing to get enough damage in there to secure these Punishers for themselves. And... I mean, this is Mortar Punisher. It got buffed on its uh, Mortar damage. Yep. Um, I I fully expect them to see, or I fully expect them to be able to get this keep down. I think that's all they get. I don't think they can push beyond that because everybody will be up. Yeah, but they definitely get a keep here, I think. Yep, looks like, okay. Blaze isn't with them yet. If, if I were Jailbait, I'm going to be grabbing this keep, yep, and then backing <laughs> out. You can, see, <laughs> you can see the retreat ping, yep. So now um, Buff Chen's going to have to deal with constant catapult pressure in top lane there. Um, you know, they've only got one fort left in bot. Um, so they're going to they're gonna have to keep an eye on, on their lanes for sure. So we do see that alpha killer. Mega Muffin doesn't like it, so I'd like to hear your, uh, your opinion on that, Mega Muffin, because I feel like there's a lot of potential for Alpha Killer into this team. They've got a lot of slows, um, stuns, all of it. Really, I mean, heck, they even have Blaze Oil. <laughs> Bro charge into the Murden. Oh. This time he gets out. Oh my god, Big and value. Jaina died. How did that even happen? Big value from the Wailing Arrow there. That was a huge um, silence. And Deckard falls as well. I mean, being silenced and not being able to use any of your abilities, uh, Vala was able to get both Jaina and Deckard there. I don't even know if I got that on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Recyclic Wailing Arrow, got it. Yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, yep, yep. Yep, I see what you did there. <laughs> the pun. I mean, I often get confused when in a game and somebody's calling out Arrow from Hanzo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. I didn't I, even think of that, but yep. I yeah, can see how that would happen. <laughs> So Jailbait chose to wisely, I think, back out of bot, just give that bot fort, you know, not the biggest deal in the world. You don't necessarily need it. Greymane trying to cap the bruiser camp there at top while the rest of the members respawn here. They're all going to be up for the next um, objective phase, which is good. But did allow um, Buff Chen to get their, their first structure down of the game. You know what? I uh, I completely had the names of the talents back in, backwards in my head. So they did go Alpha Killer, which is the three percent on the auto attacks. I was thinking Alpha Killer was the uh, Executioner, which is the thirty percent more damage, which is what I was describing, of course, with the slows and all that stuff. Uh, but using the wrong name. So yeah, I, I actually I agree. the The Executioner is the one that I was thinking that they would have taken as opposed to Alpha Killer. Which is the doot da doot talent? What is doot da doot? I am not sure. Doot da doot. Who might do doot da doot? Omega said yarpa yarpa. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on in chat right now. I don't understand the references. The but... one that makes no noise but makes your team into vampiric supermen. Huh? I mean, Malganus has that level one talent that does that, kind of. There's something I'm not following here. Yeah, I, I think I missed a line <laughs> somewhere. Ancient <laughs> Blessings. 
All right. Well, here we go. We've got to fight. Level 20's yeah. up. Let me pop those up for you guys here real quick. So we can see what's going on. Let's just there. kind of posturing a little bit here. No one really going in for that engage yet. Murden in pretty deep, though, does get cocooned, allowing uh, Nubrak to dive in on the back line. A big ring from Jaina coming out. Anubarak does fall, but Sylvanas does as well. Anduin goes down too. And Jaina's at super low health, running away here in the back. But those those big pots from Deckard, definitely getting value there for sure. Yeah, and Jaina was able to root uh, the Malganus, which is ultimately what yeah. kept her alive. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, but the stun from the Muradin. I, I love that, the 20 upgrade for Deckard with the... Um, the refilling pots. But yeah, so bottomless good. flask, I think, is yeah. what it is. Yeah, so that's good. Great talent. I mean, that, that was literally what kept Jaina alive there. Like you said, getting the Rudolph Malganus and having those pots and being able to walk over them again and again. Definitely value there. Allowed Jailbait to get a complete wipe on Buff Chen, even though they lost two of their own. Once again, secured the Punisher, and they're going to be able to push in on a keep here. Yeah, those bottom, bottomless potions, like, it, not only that scenario there but with the super potions like you can find yourself on a on a core and just go in yep eternally with those five potions i mean you could have one yep. person just soaking them all up one v fiving the enemy team if they're uh maybe not one v fiving yeah. but but it's crazy yeah. watching that health it's it's like the old uh diva reset mech thing you know you, the more people you get in the explosions and crap or with mm -hmm. uh pew pew you know being able to reset and ultimately do a 5v1 yeah, I mean, and that's the only level 20 I take when I play Deckard, so spoiler alert for anyone who ends up playing me on Deckard. That's what that's what I take Ready just because I feel like you get so much value, you know, it, it's dumb not to take it. Especially, like you said, if you're on that last core push or hanging out on an objective. So here we go. The keep is down. Blaze is on his way. Punisher is eliminated. And that's all they get. So two keeps down yep. now for Buff Chen. They're getting a little bit close to uh, back against the wall time here. Yeah, I mean, because you know, once again, they're having to deal with push, deal with pushing out lanes a little bit, and it's going to allow Jailbait to kind of just go around and, and paint the map blue. They're going to get these camps and keep up that lane pressure, and Buff Chen's going to have to keep an eye on that. Yeah, and, you know, chat's calling out the uh, Respect the Elderly being a really solid upgrade as well. And it is. It's absolutely just disgusting having a full two-second silence and blind after the sleep. Um, mm -hmm. But the sustain is also really fantastic. But we see Murden diving in deep. The stay while gets interrupted. Light Bomb coming out. Jaina in a mm -hmm. bit of trouble, but Vala is going to be the first to fall as Blaze now chasing down Thistle in the back. Vala went in deep and get, did get a three-man Reign of Vengeance, but there wasn't quite the follow-up there, so, you know, she ends up going down. Malganus does get rooted here. Smug Dolphin in a little bit of a difficult spot, but able to walk over one of those pots. Malganus still in deep with Jailbait, but putting them to sleep and possibly going to walk out of here. Yeah, and it's just the tanks at this point, um, you know, with Greymane, I think that as long as they can protect the Greymane at the core, and they have endless potions, so he can be yep. the person that I just mentioned on the field of potions, I think they make their way to the core and win the game right here. Yep. Yep, they're going to be pushing in here because right now, you know, it, it was a three for one, that fight. You know, they have the, uh, the manpower advantage with the endless pots, so, you know, they can put those down and just let Greymane go to town and, and do his thing. And it looks like... Uh... <laughs> With the damage, even just from the tanks, Malganus getting pretty low there. Yeah. Greymane trying to work on his stats to secure that kill, but instead, yeah. uh, Deckard's going to stay a while and listen, tell us a good story, and that story is that Smug yep. Dolphin is just shredding this core. Yep. We see Cocoon coming out, we see Stay a While coming out with just enough time to delay and make sure that this second game also goes over to Jailbait. So kills wise, that was actually pretty even, sixteen to fourteen. But mm -hmm. it, it just goes to show you that the you know the the kill number does not ultimately net you the win. Because mm -hmm. even though, like I mentioned, Jailbait was losing two or three people sometimes on these objectives, they were still securing the objectives. Um, you know, they were able to use them to push in to get these structures down, and then you know were able to apply the right amount of pressure that they needed to win the game. Yeah. 
So popping up the stats here just for everybody to take a quick peek at. Uh, just looking at those healing numbers, Ando and about half of Deckard, and I think that the secret to that was those those potions getting, you know, all of about 1,500 every time somebody stepped on them. Yeah. Big damage numbers from Greymane. And there are your level 20 talents. So, uh, interestingly enough, you don't see Deep Chill taken all that often, getting that additional um, mm -mm. slow. No. Desperate Prayer from Anduin. Uh, another mm -hmm. talent you don't see a whole lot because it means that you get no. stuck sitting there for two seconds. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I personally, you know, having two charges on the leap of faith is just... Oh, it's, it's too tempting, especially if, you know, your teammates have a tendency to dive in a little too deep sometimes. Having two yanks to get them out of there is super helpful. Well, and as we saw, uh, Muradin was very aggressive about positioning, um, which, you know, for the most part can be fine when you've got a second, you know, strong person in the back, which would be the Malganus. Um, but being able to pull them out of danger is, is value. Yeah. So, all right, well, let's go ahead and uh, head back to our main screen. So that is uh that's the end of game or i'm sorry match number three between jailbait and buff chen yep and let's uh let's take a look at the standings see where we're at with that now so jailbait right up at the top there they're just one point behind heroes of the united states uh 21 points behind the 22 buff chen currently sitting at number nine uh behind regen phoenix and of course the cutoff for playoffs at number eight i do believe that both buff chen and rush b the number 10 seed there um have a couple of additional matches to play so uh that mm -hmm. playoff the the certainly the bottom couple of tiers in the playoff even uh murky's hit squad there at 15 points still up for grabs in number seven yep. and number eight yep we're coming into the last couple weeks of games here in the regular season and i i'm sure we're going to see some shakeups there especially when people start scheduling and playing their flex matches. I work playoffs could be um could be anybody's game. Absolutely. And uh as we've mentioned once or twice or thrice, uh it's very important for you guys to get those flex matches scheduled. We're at the end of week 6. There are 2 weeks left for you to play those games. And by the way, you still have your own regular matches as well. So get those scheduled. Uh if you have any difficulties, make sure that you reach out to your div mod before it's too late um you know because once the once the end of the season you know finishes up here next sunday two weeks from today we go into playoffs right away and there's not a lot of flexibility at that mm -hmm. point so get them scheduled nope. mm -hmm. uh anything else we want to oh there's a meat hall tonight yeah make yes at uh meat is hall. it eight o'clock eastern it is 9 p.m eastern 6 p.m pacific there you go It'll be right here on the NGS Twitch. So we'll be giving a little sneak peek of Season 8 for anyone who's interested. Great. And uh, Berserk there asking, how about new players? If you want to join uh, the Nexus Gaming Series, uh, probably the easiest thing to do is go to nexusgamingseries.org, which is the website. Um, I'm not sure of the exact yep. way to... I'm sure there's a link to the Discord there where you can sign up as a mm -hmm. free agent. You can create yep. a team there. Um and ultimately, you know, you can sign up as a free agent to join as a sub or what have you uh, and get ready yep. for season nine. Yeah, you can post a, um, you know, a free agent profile saying you're looking for a team, you know, give everyone a little rundown on, on your stats and what you play. And, you know, sure, you can what do you say? find ready yourself a another group of four players to play with. It's a good deal. Well, uh, just real quick here, I want to shout out a couple of people following the Nexus Gaming Series. Eric with a K, not a C. Mr. Plow One, Daffil Billy, Daffil Billy, uh, probably Daffil Billy because that's kind of like hillbilly. Yeah. Uh, and then Cot Masatsu. So welcome to the stream. Glad that you could join us. Uh, Born, that's it for us. Yep, I think that's it for our game. Thank you so much yeah. for having me on to be your co-caster today. This was fun. Absolutely, it's been a pleasure. Uh, you're welcome anytime. It's been a ton of fun. Anything else you want to say to Twitch chat before we uh, go on to break for no game number four? I'm just going to give everyone one final reminder to please schedule your flex matches. Fair enough. <laughs>
Thank you very much for joining oh. me. And uh, go ahead. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, just say have a good afternoon, everyone. All right. And we'll be back in a few minutes with our final game of the day here. Let me pop up the schedule. Final game of the day is going to be a Div A game between Rewind and In Too Deep. And Resakic's going to come back and join me for that one. So uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be back shortly for game number four. Or match number four. Match number four. Yeah. Mm -hmm.